this thing on. Cool. How's it going, everyone? David from DoD Media. I recently did some visual effects work, so some compositing and rotoscoping for a company um, doing some post-production. And I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how I actually achieved that using nothing but the tools available in After Effects and a bit of stock footage. Okay, so obviously, like, there wasn't really a storm happening while those bikes were riding, right? You, you got that. So I'm going to show you how I did one of those shots right now. Let's jump into After Effects. Okay, let's go with this shot of the, uh, the two bikers going. So yeah, you see, they're actually two bikers. Whereas in the one I showed you, there's only one biker. Because the narrative of the piece was that there was only one biker. That biker was heading into the storm land. So first things first, I'm gonna get rid of that biker. I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard to bring up my pen tool. And I'm just gonna mask around this biker and their shadow, maybe to about there. Cool. Then I'm going to hit M to bring up my mask. I'm gonna change that to none, just so I can see my mask. I'm gonna hit my mask path keyframe right there to set a keyframe on the first frame. I'm gonna come along to the end of the clip and I'm gonna move that path up to where the biker now is, is now. Now if I scrub along, I can see right, well there, that needs to come up more like here. And you just run through and just, you know, just make sure that that mask is covering that biker at all times. Cool, lovely, done. So then I'm gonna come along to Content Aware Fill. I'm gonna change this to a Subtract. You're gonna see that little, little mask pop up there on an otherwise black empty screen. All these settings, all great, generate fill there. Then you just let it analyze its stuff. Depending on your computer, this will take a while or it'll be quite fast. For me, it's, it's fairly fast. Okay, and then it generates a PNG file, which is essentially just your new masked area. Now, if I scrub along, well, there's only one biker. I mean, come on. When I was learning to do visual effects, that was a pain to do. Content aware fill for video. And it's been here for years. And so few people know how to use it. Okay, next up, I wanna put a storm in there, but I don't wanna be drawing a mask there because there's loads of fine detail in those treetops and the shifting perspective that would just be a complete pain to try and mask that manually. And it would look terrible anyway unless I literally went through and drew around every single branch and tree, which is just not happening. But luckily, Adobe had the good graces of equipping After Effects with a fantastic rotoscoping tool called the Rotobrush, which you can find just up here in your toolbar. And to use this, all you have to do is open up, so double click your clip that you want to be rotoscoping. So right now we want to rotoscope out the sky. So I'll double click that layer to open it as a layer and not as a composition, otherwise it won't work. And then I will say, right, this is my foreground. Cool, lovely. And I will hold Alt. And just to be clear, I'll say that is my background. Then I will come along to the uh, toolbar again. And instead of Rotobrush tool, I'll go for the Refine Edge tool. And now Refine Edge tool, I will just draw along that edge a little bit like in Photoshop, if you're ever trying to do like hair cutouts and stuff. I'm just gonna refine that edge make sure that it, uh, it sees all those tiny little peaks and things. Then I'm gonna drop down the best quality here because if it's client work, there is no excuse not to use the best quality on anything, seriously. And then I'm happy with my feather at five, contrast at 80%, a zero shift and a zero chatter. So with everything here, how I want it, I'm gonna press play. And After Effects is gonna work its way through here and analyze this area that I've set to refine and essentially mask it for me with all of those fine details added in. And again, depending on your computer, this might be fast or it might be slow, but either way, it's gonna be way faster than doing anything manually. And so if I'm happy with that, if that edge doesn't shift beyond view or bleed or leak, and I'm really happy with it, then I'm going to freeze it. And now it's gonna work its way through the clip 
and freeze those individual frames into a sequence of masked frames. And we're done. Now, if you need to update this in any way, if you need to go in and add refine brush um, strokes or change the area that you want to rotoscope because you're like, oh, actually, I didn't want to include the four, I didn't want to include that specific mountain or that kind of thing. Well, you can go back in and edit that by unfreezing, make your changes, and then refreeze it, and it will reprocess the clip to rotoscope it. But now, well, look at that. Look at all that detail that is preserved in those trees. It looks fantastic. It doesn't look glitchy. It just looks, it looks like it's done a really good job. But now that is just transparent. That's a black alpha. You can see here, there's, there's just nothing there. So what we're going to need to do is duplicate this. I'm going to call this front slate. I'm going to call this background. Then I'm going to go to my background layer and I'm just going to remove that rotor brush because I, I'm trying to think of the best way to visually explain this. So I'm going to get my wallet out. Basically, you've got layers, right? In this wallet, you've got five cards. Let's call it five slates. The very front one is the one that we've rotor, rotoscoped out. Or in fact, the very front one is the um, content aware filled biker. But let's just focus on the rotoscoping. The very front one is the one that we have rotoscoped out the sky. So behind that, we're going to want to put in a new sky, new lightning, new elements, stock footage. But then to kind of blend it with the original, we're going to add back in a last slate behind that, which is the original footage minus the rotoscoping. So it's just a clean feed of that footage with everything. Nothing's masked out. And now we can start to introduce our stock footage. Now I got my lightning stuff from Storyblocks. This is not sponsored by Storyblocks because Storyblocks didn't answer my messages about doing sponsored content for them. Nonetheless, I do highly recommend using Storyblocks. It, it pays for itself so quickly with client work. It's incredible. Anyway, we're going to go through, uh, let's see. I'm going to go for this one. Right. I'm going to add that in. And I'm going to drag it up. OK, well, there's a city line there. Don't want a city line, but I want my lightning bolts to kind of fall. Ah, OK, that looks, yeah. Now, that looks terrible because it's not blended at all. So we're going to come through and we're going to screen it. Screening will allow us to overlay it without adding contrast, without adding saturation. It's just going to, to paint it on using a masking system of white and black. Because like if I used multiply, well, that would make it much darker. If I used uh, overlay, that would add to the contrast of it, which means it would add more saturation. I don't want that. I want it to look as natural as possible. And so now, well, yeah, that looks <laughs> that looks pretty amazing, right? I think that looks pretty amazing. Now the footage is Cine D log, right? But the clip is Rec 709. So I'm going to go ahead and add a curve effect to the lightning. I'm going to bring it closer to what I think a D log, Cine D log clip would look like in terms of that gamma. Then I'm going to create a new adjustment layer on top of that. And I'm going to add Lumetri. And then just to make this nice and quick, I'm going to come into the creative tab. I'm going to add a Cine D like LUT on top of that whole thing. And now it's looking a little bit more blended. So then I can come into my color wheels. And then finally, to sell the whole thing, I'm just going to add a solid, make it white. I'm going to call it uh, lightning flashes. And I'm going to drop the opacity of this to 10. And I'm going to change it to an add. And now, basically, every time there is a jolt of lightning, I'm going to keyframe from zero opacity to, I don't know, maybe not 10, maybe three, and then back down to zero about there. And essentially, that way, every time there's a bolt of lightning that strikes the sky, the foreground 
also illuminates a bit. And so it receives the same behavior from the background slate illumination affecting the foreground slate illumination, the foreground slate illumination, which just helps to sell the effect a little bit more, makes it a little bit more realistic. So again, here it gets brighter again. So I'll bring it back up to 2% and then back down to 0%. Obviously you do this as much as you want. You don't have to be doing every single one. Like you can just do the really big ones if you want to like here. Let's go up to five for this one. This is a big one. And that way it just, yeah, it just sells the effect a little bit more. And that is basically it. That's incredible. Right? I mean, that is, that looks like it's striking right behind there. All right. Let me know what you thought. Did you learn something? Did you improve something? Are you going to use it in one of your projects? Let me know down in the comments. And as usual, if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.